much more than just success, material success. It includes your potential for learning, your potential for excellence in all you do, your potential for helping others, your potential for lasting the distance, and most importantly, your potential for happiness. Let me first start with the achievement of success. My experience is that high achievement individuals strive for excellence in all they do. They have high aspirations, are accountable and action oriented. And high aspirations do not mean setting grandiose goals, but setting stretch targets and continuously raising the bar. And I think that is the difference between human beings and any other species. When you reach a goal, you reset that goal and look further ahead. I think you also need to reset your dreams. You have no idea today what is the potential of what you could achieve. There will be many new opportunities which will emerge as you continue in your careers. And you should be open towards seeing and spotting those opportunities. I have used the word stretch in context of achievement. I see this as important and key in all you will do. I came across the following lines from Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, which I thought were beautiful. Stretching sound is music. Stretching movement is dance. Stretching smile is laughter. Stretching mind is meditation. Stretching life is celebration. Stretching devotee is God. And stretching feeling is ecstasy. To which I may add in a more mundane and down-to-earth plane, that stretching your goals is success. You must have dreams. You may even build castles in the air. But give your dreams a foundation by using your dreams to define your goals. And as I said earlier, remember to reset your dreams. At this stage, let me be somewhat negative and talk about failure. I give below five major reasons why people fail perhaps in their careers as they proceed into life. While you stretch yourself, I must also caution that paradoxically, there are quite as many failures due to overstretching as there are understretching. I used to think that life is a marathon race, but actually it's much more demanding. It is a series of marathons interspersed with multiple sprint, sprint races. Prepare yourself for the same one step at a time, don't burn the candle and bo and at both ends and burn yourself out. Remember, you've got to last the distance. Life expectancies have now become longer, careers will become longer. And of course, you all are absolutely privileged and have had the most amazing opportunity to a person I must salute, your Swamiji, at 103 years or going on to 104 years, I think can be the best example of someone who has more than lasted the distance. <laughs> the second is the fear of failure, and therefore an inability to take appropriate risks. Learn from your successes and your failures. Don't be afraid of failures. The third is the opposite, complacency due to early success and letting success go to one's head. The fourth reason for failure, and I think this is an important one, is to put the self before the team and the organization. Remember that it is not necessary for anyone f to lose for you to win, and it is possible to be very nice and very successful. It is not necessary to claw your way to the top, but rather be like the cream which floats to the top. Leverage and multiply your own output through teams. The fourth reason for failure is that persons tend to be either good managers or good leaders, whereas you need to be both, of course, apart from being good human beings also. Too many management gurus or writers and authors of uh, management books talk about management sometimes in a negative sense, where they say that organizations are over-managed and under-led. Leadership is about vision, motivation, empowerment, and mentoring. Management is about planning, 
measuring, deciding, and executing. They are not mutually exclusive and are both a prerequisite for success and therefore the importance of setting out to be both a good manager and a good leader. Finally, the fifth and most important of reasons for failure is a mismatch between a person's skills and strengths and the requirements of the job. Too many personal decisions are made on the basis of where remuneration will be higher or the perquisites better. The right question to ask yourself is what will I enjoy more? Where will I contribute more? Which is the area in which my strengths will come to the fore? When you make your personal decisions in life, do them with your head, your heart, and your gut. The head will give you the pros and cons, the financial spreadsheets. The heart will answer where you will be happy, and the gut will provide you judgment and intuition. So much so for failure, let me move ahead. I had mentioned in the beginning that fulfilling potential is not just about financial success, but also fulfilling your potential for learning, your potential for helping others, and your potential for happiness. I cannot overemphasize the importance of learning, particularly in this knowledge era. Continuous learning is now going to be a prerequisite to prevent rapid obsolescence. And with the vast amount of information readily available through the internet and other means, the onus for self-development and learning has shifted to each of you, to the individual. You have to always learn new knowledge, new skills, new methods, and ultimately acquire wisdom. The message I want to convey that individuals have to take this responsibility for their ongoing continuous learning. This phase in your life is not the end of your learning, but the beginning of a new phase of continuous learning. Another aspect of fulfilling your potential, which I want to address today, applies to helping others. This can be achieved through social responsibility programs, by volunteering, or even just by understanding the other person's needs and supporting that need. When you help others, you maximize your own potential while enabling others to realize theirs. You leave the world a better place than you found it. Personal potential fulfillment is also linked to self-awareness. You must be clear what you want to be. Ask yourself two questions. Do I have a well-defined purpose for my life? I think this is the right time to ask yourself that question. Do I devote enough time to the things which are important for my life versus neglecting them? I'd like to share with you a fascinating approach from a very well-known management consultant, a person called Clayton Christensen, who's written in an article titled, How Will You Measure Your Life? He said, and for those of you who don't know, Christensen is the author of those two path-breaking books, The Innovator's Dilemma and The Innovator's Solution and one of the most respected professors at Harvard. And when he was at Oxford as a Rhodes Scholar in a very demanding academic program, he created time for one hour every night reading, thinking, and praying about why God put him on this earth. And arising out of his reflections, Christensen observes, people who are driven to excel have an unconscious propensity to underinvest in their families and overinvest in their careers, even though intimate and loving relationships are the most powerful and enduring source of happiness. In the above quotation from Christensen, I have introduced the subject of happiness. As many of you know, I have named my new company as Happiest Minds. I obviously attach a lot of importance to the concept of happiness. <clears throat> Achieving happiness is not about material wealth. It is about building enduring relationships and more importantly, about a mindset and a positive attitude which will help you to overcome disappointment if others let you down, which will help you to demonstrate resilience when obstacles come in your way. Many people don't realize that happiness is a choice. I will quote Dr. Bronnie Ware. He says, life is a choice. It is your life. Choose consciously, choose wisely, 
choose honestly, choose happiness. As you step out into the world, do so with self-confidence. Do so with a belief that you can make a difference. In the words of one of my favorite authors, Anthony Dumelo, a Jesuit priest, say to yourself, I am a treasure. Someday, somewhere, someone discovered me. And discover yourself. Finally, in spite of your best plans and your articulated goals, your future will be in influenced by circumstances and by forces outside your control. But more than anything else, your future will be molded and determined by what you decide you want to be and your will to make it happen. I wish you success and happiness and wish that each one of you will fulfill your own potential. Thank you and God bless. The Dean Academic, Dr. K. Sashi Shekhar, is requested to invite the gold medalists and award winners to receive the awards. Honorable Mr. Ashok Suta, I request you to kindly hand over the medals, awards, and certificates. Congratulations to all the candidates. I request rank holders and award winners to receive the medals, awards from the chief guest. Now I call upon Ms. Pavitra Nayakes, topper in Masters, Master of Business Administration, who is awarded <laughs> Dr. Shri Shri Shivkumar Swamiji gold medal. Next, Ms. Pooja Priyadarshani, topper in Master of Ap Computer Application, has been awarded Dr. Shishi Shukumar Swamiji gold medal. Next, I call upon Mr. Shashanta HK, topper in PGDMF, who has been awarded Dr. Shishi Shivkumar Swamiji gold medal. Next, I call upon Ms. Netra, topper in Electrical and Electronics Engineering, who has been awarded Dr. Shishi Shukumar Swamiji gold medal. Next, I call upon Ms. Shruti V, topper in Industrial Engineering and Management, who has been awarded Dr. Shri Shri Shukumar Swamiji gold medal. Next, I call upon Ms. Ranjita YP, topper in Electronics and Communication, 
who has been awarded Dr. Shishi Shukumar Swamiji gold medal. Next, I call upon Ms. Lerner Shri Topper in Computer Science and Engineering, who has been awarded Dr. Shri Shri Shukumaru Swamiji gold medal. Next, I call upon Ms. Meg Nayas, Topper in Telecommunication and Engineering, who has been awarded Dr. Shishi Shukumara Swamiji gold medal. Next, I call upon Ms. Dhanlakshmi V, topper in biotechnology, who has been awarded Dr. Shishi Shukumaru Swamiji gold medal. Next, I call upon Ms. Swati Patil Yesus, topper in instrumentation technology, who has been awarded Dr. Shishi Shukumar Swamiji gold medal. Next, I call upon Mr. Umang Kotriwal, topper in Information Science and Engineering, who has been awarded Dr. Shishi Shukumar Swamiji gold medal. Next, I call upon Mr. Mahesh Kumar, of mechanic, topper in mechanical engineering, who has been awarded Dr. Shishi Shukumar Swamiji gold medal. Next, I call upon Ms. Pavitra Nayakas, topper in finance MBA, who has been awarded Rudrapa Shalapur Memorial Gold Medal for Topper in Finance, instituted by Dr. M. R. Shalapur, Director, PGDMS and RC. Next, I call upon Ms. Farupa N.K., Topper in HR MBA, who has been a awarded Dr. Manu N. Kulkarni Cash Award for HR Excellence for Topper in HR, instituted by Dr. Manu Kulkarni, Professor Emeritus, PGDMS and RCSIT. Next, I call upon Mr. Arjun TR for Best Project in Marketing MBA who has been awarded Best Marketing Project Award for the best project in the area of marketing, instituted by Mr. Anand Gowda, alumnus of SIT, PGDMS, and RC. Lastly, I once again call upon Ms. Ranjita YP of Electronics and Communication, who has secured highest CGPA among all the branches of engineering and has been awarded Dr. Shishi Shukumar Swamiji Medal of Honor for her outstanding performance.
थैंक यू सर The respected Dean, Planning and Development, Professor Basavarajaya, is requested to invite the Director, Dr. M. N. Chanabasapa, to administer the oath to the graduating students. May I request our respected Director, Dr. M. N. Chanabasapa, to administer the oath to the graduating students. Friends, very good afternoon to all of you. With respectful pranams at the lotus feet of the two revered Gurujis, respected chief guest of the program, Mr. Ashok Sutaji, respected members of the governing council, the management of Siddhanga Institute of Technology, my esteemed colleagues, invitees, press persons, and dear graduating students. I request all of you, the graduating students, to stand up. This is the final part of this particular program, after which there will be address by revered Swamiji. This is the oath-taking important event in our lives on this particular occasion. Upanishads are receptacles of ancient Indian wisdom. The valuable knowledge created by those rishis and gurus is meant to benefit the mankind. Taittariya Upanishad contains very interesting and useful advice from the guru to the shishya at the time of his leaving the gurukula after completing his education. The advice is in the form of simple sentences addressed to the student. In this program of oath taking, we will follow an interesting format. I request you to play two roles, the role of the guru and the role of the sishya. When I read out a sentence, let the guru in you pronounce that sentence addressed to the sishya in you and let this Isha listen with complete attention and respect. The text is supplied to you in Devanagari and Kannada scripts. Let us begin. When I read out, let your pronoun pronouncements be clear and audible. Satyam Vada. Speak the truth. Dharmam Chara. Live righteously. Swadhyaya Pravachanabhyam Napramaditavyam Do not stop self-learning and scholarly discourses. Matrudevo Bhava Love your mother as God. Pitrudevo Bhava Adore your father as God. Acharya Devo Bhava, respect your teacher as God. Atithi Devo Bhava, honor your guest as God. Prajatantum, Maveva Chetsihi, do not cut the human chain of God's creation. Yat kinchi deyam tat shraddhaya deyam If you have something to give, give that with faith. Ashraddhaya nadeyam Give not without faith. Shriya deyam Give with grace. 
ಹೃಯಾದೇಯಂ ಗಿವ್ ವಿತ್ ಹ್ಯುಮಿಲಿಟಿ ಸಂವಿಧಾದೇಯಂ ಗಿವ್ ವಿತ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಏಷ ಆದೇಶ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿ ಕಮ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಏಷ ಉಪದೇಶ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಷನ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬಿ ಸಿಟಿ may i request all the graduating students to turn the tassel of their cap from left side to the right side the respected chairman dr n rudraya is requested to invite his holiness dr shri shri shivakumar swami ji for his benediction swamiji i humbly request you to kindly deliver benediction address my dear students and respected parents i am extremely, extremely happy to participate in school second graduating ceremony of sudan and chute technology under this autonomous system hardly congrats all students who worked hard to become competent engineers in their chosen fields of specialization congratulations are also due to the wise parents for having helped their words set a good course like a society for the engineering studies i am also very happy to note that the faculty and staff of society worked hard to get their students at both ends and outside the classrooms as it did up with Each and each one is happy to have got job placements through the campus recruitment process. This is, the, is an impressive record if we consider the fact that our annual intake by BE, 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 or the sector was in 1940. My appreciation to all concerned, the students, faculty and staff. Few decisions for your future guidance. Whether you work for a current company, or your entrepreneur yourself, it's important that you have entered it now in your chosen idea of specialization, this calls for continuous learning. <coughs> in order to succeed in the IT competitive world, you have to get totally absorbed in a profession. Only then you will be able to reach your good goal with focused attention. Today the other way is the Sri Krishna, the Bhagavad Gita, used to confuse Arjuna, in the battlefield of Kukshetra, Yavasayatmika Buddhi, Ekihe Kuranandana, Pukusha Kukshantasya, Buddhiya Vivasayam. Only that mind is the focused one, which is absorbed in the chosen profession. The minds that are not absorbed in this profession will work in different directions in which can be infected in a bar. In case you are implied, audition to how technical technical competence You must work with commitment to your profession as if you are the owner of the establishment you work before. Without compromising on your honesty and mind integrity, develop your work culture which helps in pleasing your superiors, respecting your colleagues and helping people who may come to you seeking your help. You are not living all by yourself in this world. You are, de- you are driving directly and indirectly a lot of many benefits from this society. If the people who are the faceless and who are tiring to provide you with life's necessities and services are continued to be left in below your poverty line, then the society <coughs> is 
that terror may become unstable. Instability may lead to insecurity. Responsibility of every one of us to help in changing the situation. Some time back, our Prime Minister Dr. Mahmoud Singh said the following